Hi all. Uh, see, like uh, experienced professionals might be aware about this, but some people might not. And a lot of students were asking this question sometimes. No? We have already discussed in the classes, but in, anyhow, for you to I'll be making this one. See, normally people should be asking like one ton of refrigeration, always we need 2.4 GPM of chilled water fluoride or not. That was a question. And the second one, even if the room supply air temperature is like a 14 degrees Celsius or 15 degrees Celsius, even though the chilled water supply temperature, we will be maintaining like a 4 degrees Celsius and all. Why we are keeping the chilled water supply temperature this much low, even if the supply air temperature is like a 13 degrees Celsius and all. Correct. I will explain that. See, for example, I'm having a cooling coil. I am having a space as well. I did the heating and the cooling load calculation within the space. I got nearly 14 kilowatt of total coil load, nearly 900 liter per second of air flow rate. Okay. So from the room, return air of 900 liter per second, I will be circulating through the cooling coil. The same amount of air will be coming as supply. And this coil will be able to extract 14 kilowatt of total coil load, total heat from the spaces. How? By the help of the cooling medium that we are having. If it is a DX coil, I might be having a refrigerant inside. If it is a chilled water coil, then I will be having chilled water inside. So in case of chilled water, there is no phase difference because in case of DX coils, there will be phase difference. No, It might be entering like a liquid, then it might be leaving like a superheated vapor. But in case of chilled water, there is not no like a, a phase difference for the water and all. Entering condition is also liquid. Leaving condition is also liquid. So the balancing will be easy. Since there is pipe diameter also, we can maintain same in the supply side and return side, that is easy, right? But, okay, so if it is a chilled water cooling coil, the supply temperature might be, let's say, T1 degree Celsius. And the return temperature might be T2. So like uh, T2 minus T1, you will be having a delta T. By satisfying this delta T, we will be calculating the chilled water flow rate. How? If it is a metric standard, when, you are, when your company is following metric standard, this will be the equation we will be using. Q is equal to M into CP into delta T. From this equation, Q is the total coil load after the heating coil, IM, like heating and the cooling load calculation, you will be getting it. That is in kilowatt. CP is the specific heat of water that will come like a 4.196 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. And delta T is this delta T. Correct. How much delta T we should consider? Anyhow, delta T we have to consider. I will explain that. M is the value we have to calculate. M is... Uh, the chilled water flow rate in kilogram per second. But in case of, case of water, water is a standard fluid. So one kilogram of water and one liter of water remains same. So what value you are getting, that is liter per second. At the same time, that is kilogram per second. What about the delta T? Anyhow, this is metric standard. But in case of imperial standard, the equation might be slightly different. Because the chilled water flow rate, US GPM, chilled water flow rate in gallon per minute is equal to ton of refrigeration into 24 divided by delta T, that's the equation. Both the case, all the days we were considering a delta T, 5.5 degrees Celsius. In metric standard, this delta T you can consider 5.5 degrees Celsius. In imperial standard, we were considering that as 10 degree Fahrenheit. Anyhow, Fahrenheit to degree Celsius, the conversion is F minus 32 into 5 by 9. Fahrenheit minus 32 into 5 by 9, you will be getting that in degree Celsius. That is for a single value. But when you are considering the delta, differential temperature, delta, degree, delta T in degree Fahrenheit divided by 1.8, you can convert that in delta T in degree Celsius. Or delta T in degree Celsius multiplied by 1.8, you can convert that in delta T in degree Fahrenheit. That you have to remember. Correct. That's why, let's say, when you are considering this imperial standard, okay, imperial standard, one ton, consider the ton of refrigeration is one. Then the chilled water flow rate will be ton of refrigeration is 1 into 24 is the conversion factor divided by delta T. If you are considering 10, the value will be getting for 1 ton of refrigeration when you are solving this one. 1 into 24, 24 divided by 10, you will be getting 2.4 GPM. That's why 1 ton, you will be getting 2.4 GPM. 2 ton, you will be getting 4.8 GPM. Why? Because the delta T you are considering 10 degree Fahrenheit. So this delta T is fluctuating. If it is varying, you will not get this value. So that's why one ton of refrigeration, chilled water flow rate, always we don't want 2.4 GPM. Sometimes we might be required less than that. 
Okay. Nowadays, like nowadays, 3.1, actually 90.1 standard. After 2016, they are recommending if you are if you are having an AHU cooling coil, whatever the cooling coil it may, and chilled water leaving temperature should be not less than 57 degree Fahrenheit or nearly 13.8 degrees Celsius. So chilled water return temperature should be uh, higher than 13.8 degrees Celsius or equal to 13.8 degree, degrees Celsius. And uh, delta T should not be less than 15 degree Fahrenheit or 8.3 degrees Celsius. That's the latest consideration. If you are doing any fit out projects in Dubai, Mall and all, the people there are already having experience. You might have noticed that there they are considering nearly 8.8 .8 degrees Celsius of delta T. 8.8 degrees Celsius of delta T. So that's why nowadays most of the good consultants are not using 10 degree Fahrenheit of delta T or 5.5 degrees Celsius of delta T. Nowadays we are using minimum 15 degree Fahrenheit of IIR or 8.3. Still, I'm not saying every consultants are doing this one. But a few people might be considering the older 10 degree Fahrenheit or 5.5 degree Celsius as well. Okay. Why this changes? Why the delta T they are increasing? Consider this equation. Q is equal to M into Cp into delta T. See, before we were considering the delta T 10 degree Fahrenheit. Now, if you are considering 15 degree Fahrenheit, the delta T is increasing. What about the M? Mass flow rate will decrease. If the mass flow rate is decreasing. Accordingly, the chilled water flow rate is decreasing, right? The chilled water flow rate is decreasing means the pipe diameter will decrease. The pipe diameter will be decreasing means so economically we can save something now. Less dia pipe is having less costly. That is one thing. Not only that's the reason. The overall chilled water flow rate is decreasing. The pump flow rate will also decrease. So if the pump flow rate is decreasing means the pump capacity will decrease. The pump capacity is decreasing means the electrical consumption, energy consumption consumed by the uh, pump, uh, chilled water pumps will be decreasing within the closed loop. So that, that definitely we can save something now. So that will become an energy efficient optimized selection. That's why standards will be recommending higher delta T to make it like an energy efficient model. Clear. Okay. So it is clear that like a ton of one ton of refrigeration is always not 2.4 uh, GPM. It may vary because if you don't want, if you don't know the cooling capacity, you know, most of the people for maintenance projects and all, if you if they know from the as built layout, they will be finding. Uh, the chilled water flow rate, if they don't know the AHU cooling capacity or the chiller cooling capacity, what they will do? Chilled water flow rate divided by 2.4, they will be calculating the ton of refrigeration, means cooling capacity. No, that 2.4 GPM is for 10 degree Fahrenheit or 5.5 degree Celsius of delta T. And that is not uh, same. So delta T is varying, one ton, uh, the chilled water flow rate will also vary. Okay, that's a concept. And why? As I told, for example, if you are having a cooling coil, okay. This coil will be uh, able to extract like a 14 kilowatt and the amount of air flow rate that we, are, that we are circulating through the cooling coil is nearly 900 liter per second. And from the coil load, from the like a heating and the cooling coil uh, report, load report, I got the supplier temperature is nearly, uh, let's say like a 14 degrees Celsius. Okay, means the temperature of air that is leaving from the cooling coil as per the room condition, as per the room sensible uh, heat ratio, I need 14 degrees Celsius only. Even if the supplier temperature is 14 degrees Celsius, why this is 14 degree? Or somewhat, sometimes it might be 13. See, let's say example, for example, if uh, I have already explained this before in a previous video, why we are cooling the air, uh, even if the room set point is 24, why we are cooling the air until 13 degrees Celsius and all, I have already explained in a previous video. You can watch that, but once again, Let's say if my room temperature is like a 24 degree Celsius dry bulb temperature and 50 percentage relative humidity, the dew point temperature of that temperature, no, this is the room condition, the dew point temperature of that state is 10, 11, 12, nearly 13. So the return air that is entering into the cooling coil, you have to cool that until 13 degrees Celsius or below, then only the effective humidification, dehumidification can come then only the coil will be effectively removing the latent heat. Clear. The concept is clear. But we need 13 only, not much lesser than 30. But even though the chilled water supply temperature might be too less. What is the theoretical lowest temperature of chilled water supply? Theoretical lowest temperature is 0 degrees Celsius only. Because, because we can't make the temperature of water less than 0. Yes, we can make. How? If you are mix, in glycol chiller and all, we will be mixing with 30%, 40% glycol. Accordingly, uh, the freezing point we can decrease to the negative condition. That is for cold storage and we are using. Normal comfort air conditioning system, 
the coil nowhere in the coil the temperature should not go less than 0 degree if it is happening when the air with the moisture is touching the cooling coil the moisture will condense so the condensed water is touching the cooling coil if the coil surface temperature is uh, less than 0 degree celsius it will accumulate ice on the accumulate means ice will be accumulated on the surface of cooling coil now that will be uh, a problem then all this has to be defrosted then only uh, the system will work properly correct that's why theory, theoretical lowest possible temperature is 0 degree only and some data centers and all the temperature in the supply might be coming like a 2 degree celsius that is exceptional case rest most of most of the comfort air systems almost everywhere including industrial applications most of the cases the chilled water supply temperature may come like a 4 to 7 degrees celsius retard may come like a 12 to 14 but in uh, newest like uh, astray 90.1 latest regulations it may like nearly 13.8 or higher yeah why this is 4 degrees most of the cases it might be 4 no but even though we need to cool the air until 13 only but even though we might be maintaining the chilled water supply temperature like a 4 degree why why this much lowest temperature so you can imagine the cooling coil should get a sufficient delta t if you are having a chilled water cooling coil let's say uh, the chilled water supply temperature is nearly 14 degrees celsius and the adp of the cooling coil let's say or surface temperature of the cooling coil i need like a 13 degrees celsius i need to cool that air until then so if the chilled water supply temperature when you are considering let's say if it is 10 degrees celsius chilled water leaving temperature should not higher than 13 or it should not higher than 14 at least correct because if the chilled water return temperature if it is 16 degrees celsius what will happen the air will not cool until this dew point temperature so the effective dehumidification will not happen so anywhere in the cooling coil the chilled water temperature should be less than the adp or less than the supply temperature then only the effective dehumidification will come so let's say in that scenario the chilled water leaving temperature might be let's say 13 degrees celsius so entering temperature is 10 leaving temperature is 13 so the chilled water delta t you will be getting 13 degrees celsius 10 degrees minus 10 degrees celsius means chilled water delta t is equal to 13 degrees celsius minus 10 degrees celsius you will be getting just 3 degrees celsius of delta t so if you are not getting the sufficient delta t there that's an issue because it will not get much time for the effective heat removal not only that is the reason consider this equation q is equal to m cp delta t if the delta t value is too low like a 3 degrees celsius and all mass flow rate will drastically increase so you need you need large pipe sizes the diameter of the chilled water pipe will be increasing and not only that you need large volume of water within the pipes so the expansion vessel the, the, the dimensions will get increasing not only that a buffer tank we can avoid some cases because the manufacturer recommended volume we are having within the loop buffer tank we can avoid that might be an advantage but not like that you need large quantity of water within it so the dosing system will be bulky there correct not only that if the chilled water flow rate is increasing your pump should be, should be also bulky you need large capacity pumps so that is initial investment will, will increase the pipe diameter is increasing means definitely the initial investment of pipe will increase initial investment of pump will increase since the pump is having large holes for large capacity large flow rate definitely the electrical consumption will be too high okay so a lot of disadvantage so that's why effectively the heat should be removed between the supply and retain we should get a sufficient delta t that delta t is how much we have discussed anyhow for our course we have already discussed all these things with the one one hour 30 minute three three to four classes it will come so my students can know that so but this is a free video for youtube no Any, anyone can watch it so that's why i'm making it so that's why uh, you should have a sufficient delta t between the cooling coil then only effectively the coil will be getting the time to remove the heat effectively it can remove it correct so the you, when the minimum delta t if you are if you are getting means sufficient flow rate you will get pipe diameter will be minimum pump capacity will be minimum and uh, water volume will be less there so the heat transfer everything will be proper okay and also there is one other thing as well see sometimes people might be thinking that okay anyhow if uh, the supply temperature we are maintaining like a four for the effective dehumidification 
uh, to get the sufficient delta t okay uh, then sometimes when the air is touching the cooling coil since the surface temperature is much lesser than this 13 excess cooling will happen so excess humidity removal may come there no this doubt can come don't uh, doubt that because uh, the airflow rate we will be cal calculating accordingly only means how much amount of air has to be circulated the, circulated through the cooling coil based on that because if you are getting like a 4 degrees celsius to 13 degrees celsius if it is much colder no effective heat removal will, will come for that heat removal how much amount of air has to be circulated through the cooling coil that airflow rate no we will be calculating and maintaining accordingly only so that's why if it is a properly selected cooling coil with the properly uh, proper apparatus dew point temperature with the proper airflow rate even if the coil surface temperature is lesser excess dehumidification will not come exact heat only it will remove exact latent heat only it will remove so the room humidity ratio you can maintain or the room relative humidity you can maintain properly but even though in part load condition sometimes you no know, airflow rate will decrease in certain scenario in VAV systems and all, the airflow rate will decrease. In airflow rate is decreasing, if you are maintaining the same flow rate in that scenario, excess dehumidification can come. Room relative humidity might not be achieving, uh, sorry, might be going less than the required condition. This, this can come. But in latest technologies like BMS systems, we are having multiple temperature sensors in that scenario. Means whenever the room uh, airflow rate is fluctuating accordingly, the chilled water temperature also we can means uh, we can by the help of like a, a pressure independent control wall or a, like a control system by the help of pump flow rate and all the chilled water flow rate also we will be adjusting in that scenario accordingly the excess dehumidification we can avoid okay in latest uh, machines and all that is variable flow only you know so that's why the, the room part load condition the chilled water flow rate is also fluctuating so that's why excess dehumidification will not come. But if, the, if it's a constant flow system, definitely if the airflow rate is decreasing, the supply temperature, if you are maintaining like a much lesser, like a four degrees Celsius, three and all, excess humidification, dehumidification can come, can come. But nowadays constant flow is very limited. Everywhere we are using uh, variable flow systems only. Clear? Why the surface temperature or why the chilled water supply temperature is like a four degrees Celsius, even if the supply air uh, is like a 13 degree or 14 degree, that concept is clear, I guess now. And also one ton of refrigeration is not always 2.4 GPM. I guess that uh, scenario is also clear now. 